Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and today we're going to talk about how to tell the difference between cellulitis and an abscess. The best probe for looking at the soft tissue is going to be your linear transducer. If the skin is contaminated or has a little bit of skin breakdown, probably not a bad idea to put a cover on it. Also, make sure that you use a bunch of gel. This area that you're putting the transducer on is usually pretty painful for the patient. Now let's talk about what normal looks like. You have your skin up top, a little bit of a lacy appearance up here. You have the fascial plane right here. You have the muscle, which is a lot more restricted appearance, and then the bone with this hyperechoic cortex right here. Now, when you're looking for infections in this subcutaneous tissue, which is really what we're talking about here, obviously the most important thing to look at is the subcutaneous tissue. Now let's talk about what cellulitis looks like. With cellulitis, you're gonna see either subcutaneous thickening and distortion or more classically cobblestoning. This is a patient that had an infection in the lower extremity. This first image shows a normal leg. This is the unaffected leg. This area right here is all soft tissue. Notice the lacy appearance. I can see the architecture fairly well. There's really no distortion. Now focus in on the contralateral side, the side that actually has the infection. Notice that you can't really see the soft tissue very well. The architecture is all distorted. You can't see things very well. It's thickened. This is what cellulitis looks like. This is the more classic cobblestoning appearance that has been described as being indicative of cellulitis. And if you overlay cobblestones, you can see why it's called cobblestoning because that's exactly what it looks like. Now, both of these images here are of cellulitis. The one on the left is thought to more likely represent an earlier or a less severe cellulitis, and the one on the right is thought to be a more severe cellulitis as maybe later along in the course. And here is a combination of the two, or at least a transition between the two states. We have some thickening, but we also are seeing a little bit of edema in between the little islands of soft tissue. You can't really tell the difference between cellulitis and edema on ultrasound. The left is edema and the right is cellulitis, in case you were wondering. There is some discussion of increased vascularity seen on color flow, which would imply inflammation, and increased echogenicity in cellulitis versus edema, but unfortunately it hasn't really been confirmed. All right, now let's talk about how to identify an abscess. This is an abscess. We have a circular fluid collection. It's mostly hypoechoic or dark, but there are internal echoes. It often has an irregular but fairly well-defined border. One thing that Mike Stone taught me is to look for increased posterior acoustic enhancement posterior to the abscess because this fluid in here is able to transmit sound a little bit better than the inflammation does besides it. So if you see a little bit brighter underneath it, more likely to be an abscess. Now, it doesn't always look so hypoechoic as you see here. It can often be pretty heterogeneous. If you look at this image on the right and compare it to the image on the left, you can see that the echogenicity of the abscess over here is significantly more similar to the tissue around it when you compare it to the one on the left. Now, this right here, this phenomenon, this is actually pretty important. Notice what I'm doing here is I'm pushing down a little bit on the skin. This causes a phenomenon that is called pus cystalsis, so it's just movement of that pus. And if you see that, more suspicious for an abscess. This is an example of why looking for that movement of pus with pressure is so important. This is an abdominal wall abscess that was initially missed by one of my colleagues. You do a little bit of that pressure and you can see that pus moving around in that area. It can be fairly difficult to find abscesses or cellulitis in the hand or the feet, but fortunately ultrasound transducers as a whole are waterproof. So what you do is you place a bin full of water, place the patient's hand or foot in the water bath, and you get a nice standoff pad to be able to see that finger, that hand, that foot a little bit easier, so definitely an option. I would, however, check with your manufacturers for the ultrasound machine to make sure that your particular transducer is in fact waterproof. So to recap, the linear probe is gonna be your best probe, and really what you're trying to figure out is do you cut this or do you not cut this? Is there an abscess or is there not an abscess? Ultrasound does a phenomenal job at determining the difference between the two. That's it for this week's 5 Minute Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog.5minutesono.com slash subscribe, put in your name and your email address in the little text boxes, and never miss another video. We also have a YouTube page and a Facebook page. So if you want to know a little bit more, engage a little bit more, go ahead and check those out.